Well, hello everyone. Well, yesterday I made a video uh, in this series of who God, who truly God is and who truly Jesus is. Uh, it was episode nine <clears throat> and I spoke about how 1 Corinthians 15 is probably the most important chapter in the Bible. If you understand it, truly understand it, then you have everything that you, almost everything that you need uh, to understand who the Father is and who his Son Jesus Christ is. Uh, the other one that goes along with that is Romans. Well, here it says Romans 7, but it's actually Romans 8. And Romans 8 uh, is the other chapter. If you have, if you have, if you were, you had to go out and you could only pick two letters of Paul um, or two parts of letters of Paul to go out and save yourself and save people, you'd want to say, I want Romans 8 and I want 1 Corinthians 15. If you have both of those, then you can truly know who Jesus Christ is and what is required for salvation. And you can truly know who God the Father is and who his son is and what relationship they have and what the final, um, what our final uh, destination is, is in 1 Corinthians 15. So today we're looking at Romans 8, and in my um, Con Trinity verses that I have here, you can see Romans 8, I've got 1 Corinthians up here, 15, 1 Corinthians 15 are underlined and stars beside it. Now Romans 8 I have in a box with stars, so that's how important it is. There's only a few... That is the only one that I have here that has a box on it. Uh, and 1 Corinthians is extremely important as well. 1 Corinthians 15 and Romans 8. So specifically Romans 8, 9. But I'm going to go, I'm going to read some of it. And then we'll go through it a little bit uh, to see just how important this truly is here. I'm just going to read the English. I could go into the Greek, but it would probably be an hour long Video, and I'm not going to do that, so maybe some other time I'll go into the Greek on it. So, chapter 8, therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to those in Jesus Christ who do not walk according to flesh, but according to spirit. For the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus set me free from the law of sin and death. For the law being powerless in that it was weak through the flesh God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and concerning sin, condemned sin in the flesh so that the righteous demand of the law might be fulfilled in us. Those not walking according to flesh, but according to spirit. For the ones that are according to flesh, mind the things of the flesh. And the ones according to spirit, mind the things of the spirit. For the mind... Uh, for the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. Because of this, the mind of the flesh is enmity towards God. Uh, sorry to keep losing my space. For it is not subject to the law of God, for neither can it be. And this is the nine or eight. Or we're coming up on the eight, nine. Hang on. And those being in the flesh are not able to please God. Nine, so here's nine, but you are not in flesh, but in spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone has not the spirit of Christ, this one is not his. But if Christ is in you, the body indeed is dead because of sin, because the, but the spirit, life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of the having raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the having raised the Christ from dead will also make your mortal bodies live through the indwelling of his spirit in you. So I'm going to stop there. And you can see how Paul is saying that, okay, those who are, who truly believe in God the Father and his son Jesus Christ live in the spirit. They do not live worldly lives they they uh, they they live in the spirit and if as paul goes on he talks about you know your spirit following your spirit um because your spirit will um guide you in the correct 
um, in the correct way. But let's let's look at nine uh, to the end of that paragraph, uh, which is eleven, which is extremely important. This is, this is if you know this and you truly believe this and you truly have this. You have, your spirit has salvation. Your spirit cannot be wrestled away from God or his son. Your spirit has eternal life if you have what this says right here. So let's break it down. But you are not in flesh. So he's talking about people who obviously have already done everything that I'm going to read from here on out. But you are not in flesh, but in spirit. Since the Spirit of God dwells in you. So let's stop there. So the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. So does the Spirit of God dwell in every living creature? Can any living creature be alive in God's creation without God's Spirit giving it life? No. God the Father <laughs> gives life to all of his creation. So God's Spirit already dwells in everyone. It's not necessarily connected to God, but God's Spirit dwells in all living things. So let's. Uh, so so when it says, "But you are not in flesh, but in spirit," since the Spirit of God dwells in you. So okay, we are spiritual beings. Even those who do not know God are spiritual beings. They just do not know that they are. Okay. Let's continue on. But if anyone has not the spirit of Christ, this one is not his. Now, that's interesting because if this, if anyone has not spirit of Christ, so it was talking about the spirit of God, the father dwelling in you. But if you don't have the spirit of Christ in you, this one is not his. Now, who is his? Well, you could interpret that a couple different ways. You could say his is God, the father's. Or you could also say his Jesus Christ, because God the Father says he is giving everything to Christ, all of creation uh, to Christ. So you could say uh, it could be either. Uh, let's read on. But if Christ in you, the body indeed is dead of sin, but the spirit life because of righteousness now okay so that's jesus christ's spirit right because he gave us life because he was righteous as he walked on the earth he did not sin he proved that he could stay righteous that he did not give in to the temptations of the world and so that is jesus christ's spirit but if the spirit of the having raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, well, who is that? Who raised Jesus from the dead? Well, that's the Father, right? So now we've switched back over to the Father. But if the spirit of the having raised Jesus from dead dwells in you, the having raised the Christ from dead will also make your mortal bodies live through the indwelling of his spirit in you. So who is his spirit in you? Well, that's Jesus Christ. Because it is a requirement to have Jesus Christ's Spirit living in us, which is what it says up here, in order to have eternal life. In order to make our mortal bodies live through the indwelling of Jesus Christ in Spirit in us, right? So this is extremely, extremely important. If you, if you understand... A lot of people say, "Oh, yeah, I have God living in my heart. I, I have God. I have God living in my heart." But, but they don't. They don't change their lives. They don't. Nothing changes. They 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 admit that they have God in their lives or in their living dwelling in them, but they do not have Jesus Christ Spirit living in them, which is a requirement right here. But if anyone has not Spirit of Christ, this one is not his. So we are not adopted unless we have the Spirit of Christ. Of course, we have the Spirit of God living in us. Every living being has the Spirit of God dwelling in them. But if you do not have the Spirit of Christ, this one is not his. So in order to have salvation, salvation, a person has to accept the Spirit of Christ into their heart. The Spirit of God is already dwelling in people's hearts. The Spirit of God, whether it's whether it's connected to God or whether it's not connected to God, it is still dwelling there. They could not be alive if the Spirit of God was not in them, right? 
But if anyone is not the spirit of Christ, this one is not his. Now you can say his could mean either Jesus or it could mean the Father. Uh, that is up. I will let God the Father uh, guide you in what I, be I believe it's, it's God. Uh, that it is God the Father's. But scripturally, it could be interpreted either way. So, uh, so this is extremely important. And if you if you continue to read Romans eight, it has so much treasure here. This is this is kingdom treasure here. Uh, if if you read this um, and truly understand it, um, you know it talks about us being adopted uh, into into the family of God. Um, and here's an interesting thing, but you received the spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father. So now when, when songs and, and churches and stuff say, Jesus Christ is everything, well, that goes against this, doesn't it? We're supposed to cry out, Abba, Father. We're supposed to, we're supposed to have the spirit of adoption, which is Jesus Christ dwelling in us. And then we will cry out, Abba, Father. So when when songs and, and and churches say Jesus Christ is everything, well, well, no, right here it's Abba Abba Father. Uh, it's not the name of God, but it is the title, two titles for God. So, uh, one's in Greek, one's in English. But um, um, so if children also heirs, truly heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ, so we are brothers and sisters to Christ by having Christ's spirit dwell in us. Now there's an interesting thing on the next page if you if you read this, it's a it's one of the best chapters in the Bible. Possibly possibly even more important than 1 Corinthians. Actually it is more important than 1 Corinthians because this tells you what exactly what you need to have salvation. Now here's something the trinitarians will say, oh this is a trinitarian verse here. And likewise, the Spirit also joins in to help our weakness. Uh, for we do not know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself pleads our case for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. They say, oh, that's that's talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a he, right? Because it says himself. Well, who who pleads our case? Who pleads our case? That's Jesus Christ. But it says, but the searching the hearts knows what mind of the spirit because he intercedes for the saints according to god well who intercedes who intercedes that is jesus christ jesus christ is our intercessor so when it's talking about the spirit here it is talking about jesus christ spirit when it says him self spirit himself that is talking about jesus christ spirit dwelling in us it is not talking about some third spirit that has a he that is a he it is talking about Jesus Christ here. So that is another very important thing to, to note. This is not confirmation of a Holy Spirit that has a third person or as a third being of the Trinity. This is talking about Jesus Christ here because Jesus Christ pleads our case and Jesus Christ intercedes for us, right? So that is speaking of Jesus Christ when it says he. It's not speaking of a third person of the Trinity. Well, anyway, uh, that is Romans 8, and I wanted to add that because I did 1 Corinthians 15 yesterday, and those two together, if you are armed with those two, you can, you can have salvation for yourself, and you can teach other people salvation because you will truly know who God the Father is and truly who his Son Jesus Christ is. If you, if you just open your mind, open your hearts, and not live by what you have been taught, up until this point. Anyway, I pray you have a blessed day in Jesus Christ's name.